Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be looking at the new 5 year long term dutasteride study. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. The research conducted by Ji Hoon Lim and colleagues from the Kyunghee University Hospital in South Korea has shed light on the long term effectiveness and safety of dutasteride in treating androgenetic alopecia. In their clinical paper titled, quote, long-term efficacy and safety of dutasteride in Korean men with androgenetic alopecia, five-year follow-up data exhibiting clinical improvement with sustained efficacy, unquote. The initial context emphasizes the role of dutasteride as an inhibitor of both the type 1 and type 2 5-alpha reductase enzymes that turn testosterone into DHT and further catalyzes the progression of androgenetic alopecia. For this reason, it is notable that dutasteride received approval in South Korea in 2009 for the treatment of androgenetic alopecia. This study included a total of 99 patients. Patients were broken into three groups based on their balding pattern. These groups were basic type, specific F type, and the specific V type. A distinct and crucial aspect of this study's methodology was the employment of the basic and specific or the BASP classification scale. Introduced by Lee et al. in 2007 in a paper titled, quote, A new classification of pattern hair loss that is universal for men and women, basic and specific, BASP, that's spelled B-A-S-P, by the way, classification, unquote. This is a nuanced classification method that dissects male pattern baldness and, in general, androgenetic alopecia into four basic types, representing the shape of the anterior hairline, and also two specific types, denoting the hair density especially in the frontal and vertex areas. The BASP, or BASP, classification system provides a detailed method to categorize hair loss patterns based on both the shape of the anterior hairline, that being the basic type, and the degree of thinning or hair loss in specific areas of the scalp, the specific type. Like I mentioned before, the BASP classification system provides a detailed method to categorize hair loss patterns based on both the shape of the anterior hairline and the degree of thinning in the specific areas of the scalp. When it comes to the basic pattern, there are subcategories which are subcategories L, M, C, and U. Each type apart from L has various subtypes denoting the severity of hair loss. Type L is the linear hairline without any recession. Type M resembles the letter M, highlighting a more pronounced recession in the frontotemporal area than the mid-anterior hairline. It has four subtypes, from M0 to M3, indicating different degrees of hairline recession. We have type C, which indicates the entire anterior hairline reg regressing posteriorly in a half circle shape resembling the letter c it has four subtypes being c0 to c3 showcasing the progression of the recession type u represents the most severe pattern where the hairline recedes beyond the vertex forming a horseshoe shape there are three subtypes in this category from U1 to U3 that depict varying degrees of this hairline recession. For the specific types, these types account for the thinning of the hair on the scalp, offering additional details that the basic types cannot represent. Type F denotes a generalized decrease in hair density over the scalp, especially prominent over the frontal area. It's subdivided into three categories, being from F1 to F3, that signify the severity of thinning. Type V highlights the hair around the vertex being notably sparser than other areas. The classification is split into three subtypes from V1 to V3, indicating the progression of hair loss around the vertex. The combination of both basic and specific types provides a comprehensive understanding of an individual's pattern of hair loss. This detailed classification enables clinicians to diagnose, track, and potentially treat hair loss with higher precision and customization. Now going back to the study, it was found that for the basic type 
patients, 52.5% showed improvement. Now, if we calculate this based on the total number of patients being that 99, that means approximately 52 patients belong to this group and showed improvement. For the specific F type, 75% showed improvement. If you compute based on that specific 99 number, approximately 74% belong to this group and showed improvement. Furthermore, when it comes to the specific V type, they had a staggering 83.3% that showed improvement. So using the total 99, it suggests that around 83 patients were in this group and exhibited improvement. Now, it's essential to note that these calculations are derived from the percentages of patients that showed improvement. The full study itself has yet to be published, so we're left with this extended version of an abstract. And also, there could be some sort of overlap between different groups. So like I said before, people who are basic can also have a specific type. So there's definitely some overlap here. So it's not to say that people who are basic type only 52.5% showed improvement. It's to say that there are some people who are only basic and there are some people who may be basic specific F type, also basic specific V type. In general, when you look at the basic group, 52.5% showed improvement. Now on to the results of the study. The study results are very promising. Dutastride showcases a high rate of efficacy with almost 90% of patients observing an improvement or halt in the progression of androgenetic alopecia after a five-year treatment regimen. When the results were dissected using the BASP classification, it became evident that Dutastride's effectiveness varied based on the specific hair loss patterns. Patients categorized under the specific V-type showcased the highest rate of improvement, trailed by those under the specific F-type, and finally the basic category. Now, what might be the reason for specific V and F outperforming the basic group? The BASP classification reveals that patients with the specific V-type, indicating hair thinning around the vertex, saw the most significant treatment improvements, at least when it comes to this particular five-year long-term dutastride efficacy study. The reason for this could be due to dutastride being particularly effective in this region, or the hair follicles there might be more responsive due to factors such as hormone sensitivity to DHT. Conversely, those with the specific F-type showing general thinning across the scalp, especially frontally, experienced lesser improvements compared to the specific V-type, but nevertheless, they did get improvements overall, potentially because of the diffuse nature of their hair loss or frontal region's resistance to treatments. Meanwhile, the basic category focused on the anterior hairline shape showed the least improvement. This could be due to the entrenched nature of hairline recession, or it could be that the basic hair loss pattern, the way in which hair follicles miniaturize in that specific pattern, is much more destructive. But I'm just spitballing here. Again, overall, 90% of people in this study either improved or witnessed a halt in their hair loss. When it comes to people who improved, only 52.5% of patients belonging to the basic type showed improvements. Now, that doesn't mean that people got worse, that just means that people improved. For the specific F type, 75% showed improvement, and for the specific V type, 83.3% showed improvement. So again, overall, if you take to dash right, about 90% of these 99 patients showed improvement. And I just want to think about this a bit more. If we look at the basic hair loss pattern as shown in this particular graph, hopefully you're looking at the screen, but this is just the general progression of hair loss that we would typically expect. Essentially, the hairline is just scaling back over time until it reaches to the back of the head and you get that classic horseshoe from the parietal area of the, of the lobe. If this process is really uniformed, it's not really leaving like thinning areas or sparse areas that indicate that there is still activity with the hair follicles, although they're kind of toned down and the hairs that they produced are very th like thin and miniaturized. Nevertheless, it's still active, right? It could be that in the basic classification that as the hairline progresses back to the back of the head, the hair follicles are just becoming more and more damaged than in other sort of specific hair loss patterns as seen in BASP. But that's just my personal speculation. But nevertheless, you would still see some sort of improvement if you got on Dutastride, or at the very least, seeing a major slowdown or halt 
in the progression of androgenetic alopecia. Overall, the effectiveness of treatment across these classifications may vary based on the affected scalp region, the specific hair loss characteristics, and their interactions with the treatment. Such detailed findings are instrumental as they pave the way for personalized therapeutic strategies based on individual hair loss patterns. While the safety of dutastride was a concern primarily due to reported sexual related symptoms, these adverse effects were transient and self-resolving. So essentially that means with continued use, those side effects went away. And this underscores dutastride's safety for prolonged use. In wrapping up, Lim and his team underscores dutasteride's potential as an effective and safe long-term treatment solution for androgenetic alopecia. Moreover, the study sets a precedent serving as a comparative reference to other androgenetic alopecia treatments with similar time frame studies like finasteride. The groundbreaking exploration of long-term data interwined with intricate BASP classification makes this study an invaluable asset for future androgenetic alopecia treatment research endeavors. So hopefully that video was somewhat coherent and hopefully we can get this full paper out there so we can see all of the specific breakdowns by maybe other sort of pattern types. So again, we can just get the full robust look at, okay, maybe somebody with a M2 specific V2 or something like that uh, tended to respond favorably to dutastride at this particular rate, right? So hopefully we can get that full paper out one of these days. Or you guys can go spend, I think it's like $50 to go see that paper right now. But in any case, thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you on the next video. Also, if you're interested in getting any sort of one-on-one -on -one consulting, please check out my consultation link in the description below. Peace out.